as long as we're in the midst of sin, the Most High God has given them the liberty to continue to put our black behinds to death, continue to oppress us, continue to do all those different things until our people repent. So the Most High God is saying marriage is honorable and all, right? In our community, is the so-called Black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Are we taught that marriage is honorable? Do our women aspire to get married? No, right? That's just reality, right? Or read this. But whoremongers. It says, but whoremongers. So now our women and our men are living a life of whoredom. That's just what it is. Our men are whoremongers, meaning they're sleeping from woman to woman and they're not getting married. And guess what our women are doing? They're sleeping from man to man and not getting married. So the man is living as a whoremonger and our women are living like whores, right? That's just, the, that's just reality. And these are the things that need to be taught in these churches. And our leaders need to teach us that because guess what? Your, our, the, the people that did this to our people here, the people that brought us over on slave ships, the people that came over to, to your poor parents' land, the land of Zebulon, Panama, and things of that nature, that exploits them for their money and their resources and their land, kick them out and destroy them, they're not going to teach you that. You understand? They're going to teach you that, no, you don't have to keep God's laws. No black man, Hispanic woman, Hispanic man, no, don't get married. Yet, they keep those principles, though. Our people are the ones not getting married, whereas the so-called white man, he marries his woman. The Arab man, he marries his woman. The Chinese man, he marries his woman. So why are they teaching us, though, in these Christian churches and in Christianity that you don't have to get married? Why do they teach us that, but they're married with their wedding rings, doing whatever they need to do in order to keep, keep their people prospering? Read that again. But whoremongers? But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Because they want to keep God's judgment on us. You understand that? They want to keep us with single-parent households. They want to keep us in this. Get Sirach 38 verse 15. They want to keep us with little raising our children without the father in the house. They want to keep us unmarried so that we can have an escape clause and not stay with our women. Right? Keep the man out the house. They want to keep this going on in our community as well. Read. Sirach 38 verse 15. Go ahead. He that sinner before his mate. Because we understand that having sex outside of marriage is a sin. It's a sin against the Most High God. you believe that? It is a sin. Come on, man. Marriage is honorable and all. So when you're having sex outside of marriage, it's against God's laws. Christianity teaches you, oh, Jesus Christ came and gave you grace so that you can live ungodly? Jesus Christ died and gave you grace so that you can now fornicate all over the place and be good with God. Christ died so that you can go ahead and smoke drugs and never change. And our people don't see that that's a damn lie. It's not real. It's a lie to keep you in subjection to them. You understand that? Read. He that's sinning before his maker. So it says, he that lives in sin before his maker. It says, whoremongers and adulterers, God is going to judge. Read. Let him fall into the hand of the physician. It says, let him fall into the hand of the physician. What comes when you have sex outside of marriage? What's going on in our community? What are people afraid of when they have sex to the point where they say, oh, have sex protected? Take it out. You get AIDS, right? You get children, you get STDs, you get all type of things. Why in the world do you have to wear protect? If you're doing something that you need protection for, that means you're doing something that is dangerous, right? right? But the Most High God said the bed of the married people are undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God is going to judge. So if you got to wear protection, guess what? You don't need to be doing it. But they're not telling you not to do that thing. How are people getting judged? Give me Deuteronomy 28. How people need to wake up? Because the, the reality of this truth is in plain sight. No, having sex with a boyfriend is not a good thing. Having protected sex is off. Because if, any, if you got to go anywhere to, to need protection, that's danger. Right. And having sex with a wife is not danger. You have precious babies like that come from that in righteousness, in marriage. You understand that? Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 61. And this is the reason why our people are living in the curses of the Most High God now. Our people are living and breathing and sleeping and eating 
in the curses of God right now. Read. Also, every sickness. So God is saying, because you don't keep my commandments, every what? Also, every sickness. Every single sickness. That's why our people, they say our people are what? 5% of the population here in America, 15%? Yet we're the leaders in, in STDs. How does that make sense? Make it make sense. Now, every four of them is one of us. Yet we have the most accounts of sexually transmitted diseases. Why? Because we don't have no order, no structure in our community. And our people like it that way. But the most I says, if you break his laws every what? Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law. AIDS, herpes, syphilis, gonorrhea, all those different things read. Them what the Lord bring upon thee. Those things is what the most high God is going to bring upon us until what? Until thou be destroyed. Until we're completely destroyed. It's going to cripple us as a community. Guess what else cripples us? Single parent households. Get Isaiah 3. So fornication is a very serious thing. The way our women dress, the way our men dress, the way our men conduct themselves is a very serious thing. You understand that? People will look at us and be like, oh, you're teaching hatred. Oh, you're teaching against the Bible and you're teaching against Christianity. You damn right we're against Christianity. Right. You know why? Because Christianity teaches you that nobody can judge you. Don't fix your community, black man. Stay a dumb nigga and die. Keep gang banging across the street. I'm going to give you a sandwich, though. Right. But I ain't going to teach you what you need to know. How in the world is it hatred when we're telling a man and a woman to get married? That's hatred. Brother, stop selling drugs. Stop doing drugs. Stop killing each other. That's hatred, though. Then we got onion heads that walk up to us and try to debate us in the Bible and act like they know what's best for our people. How is that the case? No, the Bible knows what's best. That's why we read, thus saith the Lord. Read that, Isaiah 3, verse 12. Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 12. These are the effects of single parent households in our community. This is the effect of fornication. Read. As for my people. God says, as for my people. He's not talking about every people. Right. He says, as for my people, what? Children are the oppressors. Little children are oppressing the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American communities today. That gang banging that's across the street that come out and try to threaten the prophets, that little boy is 14, 15, 16 years old. Right. Them little dope boys, dope girls. Little girls is, is, is crazy. Cutting each other with razors. Running around with guns now, sticking people up, robbing banks. That's our girls doing that. It says children are their oppressors, but what's the problem, Rick? And women. And who? And women. That single mother that said she had a boyfriend and had sex with that man, had a baby that he, he skated off because he ain't know nothing about God's laws, says that women do what? Rule over them. And women are the rulers. Are, they're the ones leading our community. When the police comes to a black man's house, who's the first person they go to? They go to the woman first. Right, right. That's not by that's not by coincidence. That's by design, because there is no man in the house according to the so-called white man and according to the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American woman. We've been programmed backwards. Hence the reason why we remain at the bottom of society today. It says women rule over them. Read it again. As for my people, so God is saying, as for His people, who's God's people? The Israelites? I'm going to ask you, who's God's people? Those that love him? Does God only, does God deal with everyone then? Get Matthew 2. What you'll understand is that the Bible is the book of our forefathers. This is that, when you read the prophets, it says, speak unto the children of Israel. Right. right? Speak unto the children of Israel. Christ said, I have not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's all the Bible is written of in 2 and 4. But when your enemy gets your book, reads your history, the best way to oppress a man and to, to overcome a man and defeat him in battle is to learn his ways first. That's the art of war. Right. They learn our ways, they take our books, and then they, they don't allow you to read your own book because you'll be put to death during slavery if you tried to read. So they got a 400-year head start on us. Right. But now we can read. So now I don't give a damn if you hold the Bible up and say, the Bible says this. No, no, brother. The Bible says what I've just read, not what my oppressor tells me. You understand that? Read. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 6. And thou, Bethlehem, and the land of Judah, are not 
the least among the princes of Judah. Uh -huh. For out of thee shall come a governor. It says, out of thee, out of Judah, out of the 12 tribes of Israel, the head tribe being in Judah is going to come and Jew is short for Judah. You understand? It's not the other way around. Jew is not short for Jewish. That's nonsense. Right. Jewish means that you're not a Jew at all. You're something like a Jew. You understand that? Jew is short for Judah. There's right. no Jewish in the Bible. That's just another deception from the devil himself, right? To keep our people blinded. But read. That shall rule my people. That shall rule my people what? Israel. That shall rule my people who? Israel. So who is God's chosen people? Israel. Go back now. So God's people is Israel and only Israel. And the issue with our people is that children are our oppressors and women rule over us. Why? Because our people are not being taught who they are. And they're not being taught the laws of the Most High God. Read that again. Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 12. As for my people, children are the oppressors, and women rule over them. Oh, my people. So he says, oh, my people. Who's God's people? The Israelites, according to the New Testament in the Bible. That's right. Right? So that's the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. So, oh, my people, you children of Israel, what? They which lead thee. It says the people that are now over your community that are leading you have done what? Caused thee to err. They've caused us to live in error. They've caused us to live in error. They've caused us to go against the Most High God's laws, statutes. Get Jeremiah 50. Get Jeremiah 50 verse 6. They caused us to go against the Most High's laws, and that's the reason why we are oppressed. But you have your brothers that are waking up today that all of the enemies are against. You know why? Because the more of us that wake up, the more people that we teach to wake up and start keeping God's laws and to come back to their nationality, guess what happens? Their kingdom starts to crumble. You understand that? They lose complete control over their slaves. You understand that? Read. Isaiah chapter 50 and... Oh, excuse me. Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 33. Verse 6. Verse 6. My people have been lost sheep. So God says again, my people... Who's God's people says? The Israelites. He says, my people have been lost sheep. We're lost. Why? Because we don't know our nationality. We're lost from the laws of God. We're lost from who our God is. Right. We're lost at, in here in America today. I ask a black and Hispanic man, what's your nationality? I get five different answers. Right. Easy. But you ask a so-called white man what his nationality is. I'm Caucasian. I'm Caucasian Russian. I'm Caucasian British. I'm Caucasian whatever. They know that they're Caucasians from the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. They know that thing. We don't know who we are. You understand that my people have been lost sheep. Read. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. Our leaders, our shepherds have caused us to go astray because our shepherds are not teaching us God's laws. We go in a Christian church, they give you a good song and dance. They, they, they see a, a homosexual walk up into the church. Yeah, you can walk into the church, but what do they say? They don't correct them. They don't fix it. They say, brother, you need to change your life because how you're living is against God. No, Jesus Christ don't. You see that? Wow. You see that, right? I want you to pay attention to that. We're not going to address him, but just listen to the little ad libs he says. He says homosexuality is not against God. That's right? right? Yeah. But can a man and a man have a child? Did God tell Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply? Bring it out. So how can a man and a man multiply? That's a Jedi mind trick that the deceiver, I'm not going to call him what he is. That the deceiver is teaching our people to deceive you, to keep you away from God. Right. You understand that? Right. The deceiver, another one for the deceiver, I'm going to be playing, is the devil. Read. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have turned them away on the mountains. Read. They have gone from mountain to hill. Our people have been scattered from captivity to captivity. Mountain to hill. Read. They have forgotten their resting place. Because our people have forgotten our resting place. Where we get rest. Where we get justice. Where we get peace. Our people don't have no peace. A brother, one of our brothers and sisters got shot down in Jacksonville the other day. And our people are always ready to fight in a protest and march the second somebody gets shot down, one of our people gets shot down by the enemy. Right. But our people never want to do the things that's going to get us out of the situation that we're in. Read. All that found them, it says all that found
on them just like the so-called white man that just walked off you mad because we didn't want to hear his nonsense. Read. Have devoured them. Have devoured our people now. Our people are completely devoured. Look how our women are walking around. Look at our young men walking around selling drugs, doing drugs, gang banging. Look how many of our sisters walk around pushing the damn straw and don't know the, the father their baby is. Right. Look at our people. We're completely devoured and destroyed. By the teachings of the same person that brought us over here in slave ships, that man's ancestors. And we trust in that nonsense. Read. And their adversary said. And our adversary, the same man that walked off. Their enemies say what? Read. We offend not. We ain't doing wrong to them, nothing wrong to them niggas. We ain't doing nothing wrong to them so-called black people. They, they shoot us down and damn Dollar General, they say, guess what? I ain't do nothing wrong. Right. I'm supposed to do that because I hate niggas. I hate black people. Read. Because they have sinned against the Lord. Because they understand that as long as we're in the midst of sin, the most high God has given them the liberty to continue to put our black behinds to death. Continue to oppress us. Continue to do all those different things until our people repent. That's where that oppression comes from. Give me that on Job 36. That's why we're being oppressed as a people. That's why you learning who you are. What's your nationality? Guatemala. You said Guatemalan, right? On the sign here it says you're from the tribe of, of Zebulon. You're not a Guatemalan. A Guatemalan was a name given to you by your oppressors. We're going over these curses. We're showing you who you are in the Bible. For example, we just read something about women ruling over the people and children oppressing. What nation of people goes through that since? What nation of people has Nietas, Latin kings, in their, in their communities? Huh? None. So they, does our people have them? No. Crips, bloods, vice lords. There's no gang, no gang violence going on in our communities. Yeah, right? That's how our people is telling you that. Read. 36, 15. Job chapter 36 and verse 15. He delivers the poor and his affliction. The thing is the Most High is trying to deliver you. The Most High is trying to deliver the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans that are being afflicted today. Right here in America. That are asleep here in America. That loves being a black nigga slave here in America. Or a Hispanic nigga slave here in America. Our people love this thing. But he's saying he delivered. Read it again from the top. He delivered the poor in his affliction. But he delivers the poor in our affliction. So he makes the so-called white man show his true colors every single time we become a little bit at ease. We got happy when that Alabama nonsense happened, right? When the brothers was fighting on the boat and we beat up a couple of white boys, right? It was, it was good, big fun for the black man, right? But guess what? That white man got to go home to his family. Dollar General the other day, these, these three black people didn't get to go home to their family. They got put to death. In Charleston, when that, when that church got shot up, those black people got put to death. Them, them little black girls back in the 60s during Martin Luther King days, they got put to death. Martin Luther King got put to death. Right. And he wanted to join with the same people that killed his ass. When are our people going to wake up, though, and understand that, listen, you cannot join amongst them. They are here to correct you and afflict you until you wake the hell up. Read. And openeth their ears and opens their ears now in what? In oppression. You should be using your oppression to seek the men of the Lord that are out here teaching the Bible to you. You take a damn flyer and you ask questions and you start dealing. Right. The same thing that you're doing, sis. You understand that? That's what should make you want the answers to your to your issues. <clears throat> but our people don't want to hear that. Our brothers think that we good here in America. Our people are happy they got a little nine to five job where they got to go pay bills and, and submit themselves to the so-called white man. You understand that? You are from Zebulon. You understand that? Give me Genesis 49 real quick. I'm going to show you Zebulon in the Bible. You'll never, ever again sit there and talk about you are um, what is Guatemalan or Hispanic or whatever. You're not Hispanic. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native. Matter of fact, hold that. Give me Jeremiah 50 verse 33. All of us are one people. The black, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we all are Israelites, right? And we all are suffering oppression. The problem is we don't know that. God knows it. Don't read that. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 33. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. the children of Israel. It's saying the children of Israel. That's your bottom ten tribes right here. And Zebulon is one of them. Read. 
and the children of Judah. It says, and the children of Judah. That's your top three child. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Read. Were oppressed together. It says we were oppressed together. And the Most High opens our ears in oppression. The officer read earlier, I will go and return to my place until we acknowledge our offense and start seeking God's face. In our affliction, we're going to seek us early. We're going to seek him early. You understand that? That's why, when do most people turn to God? When they say, oh, Lord Jesus, when they're going through something, the biggest, strongest, most muscular black man on the earth, the second that he gets locked up behind bars, what he turn? He, he, he start seeking God then, right? Oh, God, please help me. There's niggas in here bigger and stronger than me. They're trying to do things to me that I'm not, I don't want to happen to me. That's what they want to turn to Christ now. That is not by coincidence. Read. And all that took them captive uh -huh. held them fast. All that took us captive held us fast. We ain't never been freed from no slavery. Don't let, don't let them think that the emancipation actually happened and you've been freed. Because you're not free today. Freedom is when you collect the taxes and they pay you. Freedom is when they pay you to transport them elsewhere. You ain't free if you paying to get on a bus. That's not freedom. And if they did emancipate the black man, then where the hell did Jim Crow come from? Why do we have to have a civil rights movement? Where did the black codes and vagrant laws come from? Why are people still being oppressed today? Why do we have to go ahead as, as a so-called nation, if we're Americans, why on earth do we have to renew our rights to vote in every, every what, 20 or 30 years? And it's coming up soon. The so-called white men don't have to do that. We have to do that. Why? Because we weren't brought here to be Americans. Right. You understand? We were brought here to be afflicted by the Americans, by the Romans, by the Edomites, by Idumia, by the devil himself, so that we can wake up and take rulership back. Right. You understand that? And that's why they don't like us. That's why they don't like the men in purple. That's why they, they want to see you not wear a dress and not wear fringes and have a boyfriend and all those different things. You know why? Because the second you start turning, you become their real enemy. They don't give a damn about no damn dope boy walking up the street. Right. They don't give a damn about that. What they care about is somebody actually reading a Bible that they claim to believe in, that they claim is the book of God. But here's what the book of the Lord says again. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. It says the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. Guess what? It didn't say everyone in the world was oppressed. So where's the other people? If Israel and Judah are being oppressed together, then what are the other people doing? They are oppressing Israel and Judah. Right. They're not your friends. You can't have it both ways. You can't have someone being your oppressor and the oppressed and afflicted. It don't work like that. And guess what? He knows that. Bring it out. You don't. Read. And all that took them captive. And all that took them captive did what? Held them fast. They held them fast. They got shackles on our minds now. John 3.16. Well, where was John 3.16 when they was raping our mothers and daughters? Right. Where was John 3.16 when they killed Martin Luther King? They killed them, not us. He wanted to join with them. Didn't he? He wanted to hold hand in hands with the same people that when he sat down at a damn bar to eat, they threw bottles of milk at him. When he went to walk down the street and march a peaceful protest just to be hand in hand with them, they sprayed him with, with fire hoses. They beat him damn near half dead and threw him in jail. The same people. They refused to let them go. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 